Welcome everybody. Today we've got some very special guests with us. A couple of guys from BAC. We've got Stuart, who's the head of PR, and we've got Elliot, who's the bodywork specialist. It's been an exciting last six months. Uh, we've started to develop a good working relationship with you guys, and uh, we've uh, got into a bit of a partnership. But for those people that, you know, customers abroad and, and those that might not be familiar with BAC, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, of course. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having us here, and we're obviously delighted to be joining forces with G-Technic. A um, bit about BAC is uh, it stands for Briggs Automotive Company, uh, which is founded by brothers Neil and Ian Briggs. Basically, once upon a time, Neil and Ian had a design engineering consultancy business and worked for major OEMs, you know, Porsche, Bentley, Ford, you know, you name it, very successfully, I might add. I think once, you know, they had a moment they thought, what would the car look like? What would it drive like if we were the ones writing the brief? Like, what would that be exactly? And sort of, you know, in amongst other things, they would go track driving in their Lotus Elise's with uh, senior designer Guy Harvey uh, at BAC. And even that, they, you know, with two seats, fabulous cars, but, you know, two seats, even that is some sort of compromise. Um, and they land on this vehicle that's totally uncompromised, totally raw, focused, all about driving, all about the perfect piece of sports equipment for the sport of driving. Not an A to A, a to B vehicle, but A to A, just total driving experience. And then the mono was bought. Wow. Obviously, we started to talk about partnerships um, early this year as, as Corona just started. And I just want to kind of get an idea of the motives of, of why you guys, you know, either saw or approached G-Technic and, and what sort of inspired you to, to, to start talking to us about a, a partnership. Well, I think as you could probably gather, we're ultimate perfectionists uh, in everything we do. Um, and basically, being the best means working with the best. We're, we're super proud of all our partnerships around the world, all our suppliers. Um, but G-Technic takes everything to another level in our response. We had our bodywork specialist recommended it, so G-Technic wants to go with, and you'll say why. Exactly. I mean, tried and tested products. You, in my opinion, you can't argue with that. The the proof of, of a product is its its on road tests, and that's something that G-Technic certainly stands head and shoulders above, in my opinion. It's got such a good range of products. Um, that it seems to fit every one of our needs. It doesn't matter what we need. We, we seem to contact you and you've got a product that will suit us. It doesn't matter whether we've got a new material, a new kind of protection film, uh, solid paints, your, your new ceramic coatings. All of the, You seem to just fit the bill in every sort of department that we needed. From our side, it was certainly a no-brainer. I mean, I guess, you know, COVID at some point had an impact to, to one extent, you know, for, for many companies out there, but have you guys seen much of a, a slowdown in terms of sales or you know brand recognition, or is it just constantly you know on a? No, yeah, we're, we're emerging in a in a super strong position from the coronavirus uh, crisis. But a great thing is that people had a lot of time to to look at things where you wouldn't, and they found us on you know in this news article and that article on social media, and you know that's when you start thinking about oh wow that's incredible let's uh, I'll think about that and. Uh, so yeah, we're, you know, it's a horrible time for the world and obviously condolences to everyone, but uh, we are, we're emerging in a strong position, safely. Certainly on a production side, side and an engineering side, um, in a way it's been a blessing, you know, there's, there's, like you say, there's so much going on all the time, events, sales, um, going off, customer trips, tracks, owners club meetings, but with the whole sort of company being grounded, it's really given us a new sort of lease of life to really focus on the intricate details within the factories. How can we really, not that these things would ever be overlooked, but it was, we've really given that time to make them what we know they can be. And I think certainly as a company, we've, we've, we've come out of it extremely well. So in terms of the model lineup um, within, within BAC, can you give us a quick run through of the, of the different models that, that you guys offer or, or are available to purchase for, for customers? So the first and now iconic uh, mono is the BAC mono, uh, released in 2011. Since then it's been exported to 42 countries around the world, We've got dealership agreements in the likes of you know, three states across America, Japan, Hong Kong, Canada, Mexico, and most recently Indonesia. Oh. Yeah, then we have the mono R, which uh, Elliot will talk about. Mono R is sort of the second iteration of what mono is so it's you know it's it's faster it's lighter it's track focused but at the same time it's we try to optimize everything we have and we try to improve on all of the original designs so it's really just a grouping together of all of those small differences and then combine that with a whole new body panel set every single um, body panel we have on the mono R is uh, completely new 
completely bespoke. Um, lots of interest in new materials, stuff like graphene, niobium, which we'll get into. Um, and that's sort of, that's where we want to be and that's where we are at the moment. Um, going forward, we have uh, the, mo the new mono, which we, we would have uh, released originally in uh, Geneva this year, which unfortunately obviously didn't happen. But we had a great virtual release. Um, and that's the same. It, it follows the same sort of structure that we want, that we're going forward with mono, where we're trying to be at the forefront of every, everything we have. Obviously, this new one, we're, we're going turbocharged. Um, that makes it obviously much better for Euro 6 compliance in terms of emissions and regulations in that way. Um, that's what the future should hold, and I think it's quite exciting. Monowire, especially, we, we refer to it as the new reference, it's sort of, which basically means the new benchmark for everything, for design, for technology, for performance, for everything. And that's, you know, we're targeting lap records around the world, which we consider the ultimate, you know, benchmark for performance. That is what drives that. Um, and that's great. And we launched that at Goodwood last year a bit of a lesser known story for, for you guys we we were in a rush to get it finished as we are perfectionists we want everything to be absolutely spot on um, and that meant lots of late nights mainly for Elliot um, and the drive down dread on Thursday at 5.30 a.m. I think we arrived about 6.15 that was before we even got the car set up on the stand which has its own challenges and then launched the car at 9 a.m. that very day so we just wow. made it last minute I think we had an hour of and a half sleep and all looked if that. horrendous. Mm -hmm. um, but all planned, right? Of course, of course, yeah. <laughs> it was the excuse for the gin and tonics after that was what we wanted. In terms of so the, the, uh, the R, uh, I mean, there's some quite mind-bending stats to them, just in terms of performance. Can, can you give us a bit of an insight on, as to what sort of performance yeah. uh, these so cars have? One of ours, obviously, you know, performance, we've dialed everything up to 11 as much as we can. Um, Performance-wise, it's 343 brake horsepower. Um, but it weighs just 555 kilograms, which is a little more than us three through the heavy winter. Um, what that means is a power to weight ratio of 618 brake horsepower per tonne, um, which is you know, mind blowing again, but a new world record in fact. Um, it's because from a two and a half litre engine, naturally aspirated, it's the highest specific output of all time, which is 137 brake horsepower per litre. Wow. So a new record, a new reference if you like, um, and yeah, that's what we're all about. So you're constantly pushing, you know, boundaries with not just the engineering side of things, but with the technology side. And you, you kind of mentioned graphene um, earlier, Elliot. If you can give us a, a bit of insight as to what sort of, if well, share with what you can um, in terms of materials, what new materials you're looking at, and what materials that you're currently using on the car to make the, the car even better. Of course. So the big one that we changed when we were doing the new body panel set for Monoir was we all know we have carbon fibre, but you know, not, not that it's a standard material now, but you know, how can that be optimized? Yes, we've already got something that everyone knows and it's very really good functionally, but how can we make that even better? How can we make it stronger? How can we make it last, uh, lighter? How can we make it more suitable to our role? So something that we worked with for a few years um, through one of our R&D programs was the how to incorporate graphene, which is essentially just a single chain carbon atom um, it's the strongest material in the world uh, for its weight. And so how could we incorporate that into the carbon panels and the structures uh, that we used to make them? It took a few years of, uh, of development, to be honest. Um, lots of trialing, lots of failing. Um, and we basically ended up with a, with a process where you end up with, you essentially start with graphene. And what has then happened is the graphene's milled, it's machined, it's ground down until it's almost atom to atom. So you've got single chains which are just broken down into really strong, really small fibres. That's then infused into the resin. Now this resin we use as the standard composite of carbon fibre being your carbon fibre fibres and your epoxy resin. What we've done is we've infused the graphene into the resin, which essentially means you're getting the benefit of the strength and the stiffness of the carbon fibre, but you've also got the flexibility of the epoxy and that makes it so much more durable, so much, so much lighter. We infuse the graphene into the pre-preg carbon for the moulds and then we, uh, we cook the panels into that and that's how we come out. Some of the main advantages of that is obviously for the same panel, as we now have more strength in the epoxy side of the panel, it means that you can physically reduce the numbers of layers of panels to achieve the same stiffness coefficient. So you want a panel to be so strong, whereas we used to have three panels, three layers, three la layers of lamination 
in the BAC Mono originally. Uh, we now have two in the Mono R. That makes it lighter, that makes it just stronger for the same weight, but there's also other advantages. We physically have to use less material, we have to use less energy to bake the materials, we have to use less energy to transport materials, um, but it also gives us a lot more freedom in terms of some of the ways that we can actually use it to develop new panels and new shapes. Yeah, it's totally revolutionary. I mean, a panel set previously was 41 kilograms, and with graphene, we've taken that down nine kilograms to 32 kilograms. I mean, for a car that weighs as little as it does, I mean, that's just, the differences are incredible. But everything we do is obsessed with lightweighting. I mean, the titanium bolts, for example, um, you know, what, that's, that saves, I think it's 20 grams per bolt or something like that on, on our wheels. And you know, it's just that, these little fine margins, but everything is just reducing the number as much as we can. And obviously that pushes the envelope of performance with braking distances, acceleration, agility, and that's what we're all about. We have more individual components in terms of carbon panels on the Monoir, but like Stuart has said, we were able to take nine kilos out of the body panel, the whole, the whole bodywork weight. And nine kilos doesn't sound like a lot, but you've got to think of that in respect. That's 25% of the whole weight of the body of the car. I mean, if you were to take a standard road car and take 25% of the mass of the bodywork off, you'd end up with no doors, no boot, no bonnet. And you know, it's just not really attainable in any other way. So I think that was the real, the real groundbreaking use of graphene. It was just physically been able to achieve margins that weren't ever perceived accessible early before, before we really worked with graphene. So we were talking earlier about this a, a new element that you guys have started to add into your production and, and, and manufacturing process, and it's, it's niobium. So yeah, niobium is an element, um, it's been around for a long time. Um, but we're just starting to really develop some technologies and look into how we can really incorporate it into our space frame tubular chassis. Um, so obviously, normal alloy technology, you combine a bunch of materials, a bunch of metals, and you enhance their properties, much in the same way that adding graphene into carbon composites enhances the specific properties that you want. Um, niobium is much the same as that. It's purely an element that we add to our chassis and that enhances the stiffness, it enhances the strength of the chassis, but again, it reduces the weight. And it's super exciting, you know, it's a, it's a naturally occurring element uh, mined in Brazil by CBMM, our partners. And, and it's just, it's a total game changer. I think when I first heard about it, I was like, why hasn't this been done before? But you know, it's an honor to be the first, you know, supercar uh, company using this. Um, obviously it has been used in Extreme E, uh, launched by Lewis Hamilton, but more, more so it's aerospace, it's architecture, you know, it's a seriously, seriously cool bit of kit. You know, we're looking forward to, again, being the, you know, the groundbreakers and the front runners of this technology. Um, well, thank you guys for coming in. It's been great to have you. Um, in terms of just high-end cutting technology, there is a, there's a massive synergy there, and, and we look forward to working with you guys, not just on, on the R, but on future models down the pipeline. Wish you all the best for a year, and I, I hope it, you know, next year is a roaring success for BAC. Likewise, sir. Thank you for having us.